I could only think of one word to describe these scriptures today. Despicable. Despicable. Um, I may be mistaken, but I think Disney, Walt Disney uh, Productions put out a movie called Despicable. And I think it was about a wicked queen or something, or those little minions with the one eyeball. I'm not sure what it was, but it's despicable. And despicable is a word, oh, it's a rich word. It's just gross and disgusting. And how could anybody act like this? So we get two stories today, or two references to the murderous thoughts about or actions about trying to kill uh, a son, uh, to kill a brother. And it's, it's despicable. Now, I know I was uh, number five out of six kids. I had a brother, sister, brother, then seven years, and then a brother, then three years, me, three years, and then my last one, uh, Larry, that we called Goo Goo. Goo Goo was spoiled. I was not spoiled, <clears throat> but for three years I was king of the house. I told you this before, but my dad would come home every day from work, and he, he called me Peye, and he'd come and pull out his coins out of his pocket and give me just the pennies. Oh, I was in heaven, and only me. I was the only one who got the pennies, and then Goo Goo was born. Oh, gross, gross, the baby of the family. So it took me years before I realized I had sibling rivalry in my heart, that I was jealous of him, and I thought uh, bad thoughts, and I was uh, not mean to him, but I, but I think I was very judgmental. So this story of Joseph connects with me. But I thank God I wasn't despicable like those brothers. They were so jealous. Daddy caused it. He caused it by favoring that one son so much. And then um, uh, look what they did. They were going to kill their own brother out of their jealousy and then lie to their father. And thank God one of the brothers had at least a, a half of a heart, and he said, let's just throw him in the cistern and, and, and we'll tell dad that, that he uh, was killed by an animal. So that was their plan. And then, more despicable still, they see a, a, um, a group of camels coming along, and they're a trade group, and said, why don't we sell our brother to them, make some money out of it, and then we'll still lie to our dad. Despicable, despicable. And that's what happened. Now, um, the gospel is a parable that Jesus tells, and he grabs hold of the same theme, and it revolves around a son. But you heard the story. The, the man has a vineyard. He went on vacation. He came back. He he went to have the, his produce given to him. His servants went. They beat him up. They killed one. He sent another group. They beat him up and killed him. And then he said, well, maybe if my son goes, they'll respect my son. And they don't. Despicable. They kill the son because they say, now if we kill him and he is the inheritor of all of this, maybe we can inherit. And... Um, this may sound weird, but, uh, and I, I'm probably wrong here, but I understand in Mexico that uh, if you have a house down there, but you live up here, uh, and some people move into it and, and uh, take possession of it, that after a certain amount of time, they can legally obtain that house. It's, uh, well, I forget what the phrase is that they call it, but it has to do with possessing it. At any rate, I think that was the case for the Jews, and um, these people were we're going to take over the inheritance. And so then, after Jesus tells this despicable story, because it's a teaching story, a parable, he says, what will that father do to those evil, despicable tenants for what they did? And they said, the chief priests and the elders, hey, we'll put those wretched people to a wretched death. And then Jesus holds up the mirror. It's you people. You're the ones. Here, the kingdom of God has been brought to you, and instead you want to kill the one who is bringing you the kingdom. This is your story. It's all about you. And they would have arrested them if they could have. And the only reason they didn't, those despicable people, was because the gospel said, 
they were, at least for that time, the people were enamored with Jesus and impressed with Jesus and loved his teaching, and they were afraid that the people would rise up against them. But because we know the end of the story, uh, we're being warned of what's coming, and we know it end like that. We know it. And so we're getting almost like prepared by the liturgical, liturgical text right now. Say, get ready, get ready. And then, of course, in Holy Week, not once but twice, we hear two different passions, the passion of, of Mark on Palm Sunday and then the passion of John always on Friday. Despicable. What does this do to you and me? What's this do to us? Um, first of all, again, I, I confess to you my sibling rivalry for my brother, Gugu, because I, I think it's important to allow these texts to speak to that part of us that might be sinful or narrow or something like sometimes the people in the scriptures. And maybe we never, I never planned to kill my brother. I, I thought of it, I suppose, many times, but no, of course I never did. Um, and if I ever had plotted it, oh, I would be crying as I tell you this story today. But I do recognize a tint, just a little bit, of that sibling rivalry and jealousy. And I think, too, that this parable of Jesus is asking you and me, do we ever miss it? Hear the kingdom of God being preached to us, but we miss it. Uh, we're afraid to look at our own sinfulness or to admit it and to say, Lord, we're sorry. We're sorry and we beg for your mercy. And the reason is because God's mercy, it's not that he would get mad at us and punish us, I don't think. But his mercy is something really blessed. It's a merciful love that says, yeah, I know you're sinners, but I love you so much. I know you're sinners, but I will grace you and bless you every day, no matter what you do, no matter how you are. And that really is the good news that we call the good news, that we have a God that is so good and so loving. And I know the scriptures often don't talk about it that way. They often talk about him ready to punish us and castigate us and, and, and destroy us. And he even apparently from the word talks about killing people, ready to kill all the people of Nineveh. In the Noah story, killing everybody but eight people on earth, yikes. That makes God despicable. But I think that that's our portrayal of God, even out of our own guilt and all. Um, today, I hope that Jesus jars us a little bit to say he really is all about the kingdom, the kingdom of God. And his invitation for us is to belong to that kingdom and to reap the blessings and the gifts and the grace of that kingdom. Please stand.